We're going to start in child's pose. And bring your toes together, knees apart. And just sit your hips back. And it's always nice. I always say this, but it's always nice to have a few familiar ways to start your practice, whether it's seated or in child's pose or even standing with your hands together at your heart. But having that familiar home base to kind of drop into and center. I always stretch my arms out, but one can relax their elbows. It's funny, that used to not feel relaxing to me to bend my elbows. Now it feels okay. Um, so you just pick a, you pick a variation of child's pose that allows you to relax your upper back to open up your lower spine and to find your breath. So that's really what we're doing when we very first start. It's just attuning to the breath. You don't have to wildly control it in the beginning. You're just attuning to it, listening. See if you can shift the breath to the nostrils. It is really hard to nose breathe when you're talking. So this is the other reason when I do yoga with my kids, um, it kind of drives me crazy because they keep wanting to talk and it takes me out of my breathing. So yeah, maybe that's why I'm okay with my cat. He doesn't ask me questions. So <laughs> breathing in the back of the nose, nice big inhale, full exhale. And then we'll stretch the arms out and coming to downward puppy. So just walking the knees back a little bit, straight arms, spread your fingers, press down into your fingertips, turn the crease of the elbows up just slightly toward the sky, the inner edge of the elbows. And then check that your front ribs aren't sinking, right? That you're not over uh, exaggerating that arch in the back. Just lift the ribs just slightly until you feel a little integration and you feel a line from the tail out through the crown of the head. Like a, a line that means like a flow, a continuous flow of energy. It's not getting pinched off in any one place. Maybe for you it's the back of the neck. That's a good place to check. Sometimes it's the tailbone itself that gets pinched off. It's a little hard to do in this position. The tailbone should be nice and wide. And then we're going to go to downward facing dog. And then see in downward facing dog if you can keep that same flow, that same openness along the length of the spine. Again, this is a place where a lot of us will over harden the low back or the mid back, we'll kind of jam the ribs toward the ground. Let them soften, kind of float up a bit toward the sky, bend your knees and think more about tilting the pelvis and not the spine. So it's more about lifting the tail gently, keeping your knees wide, your heels pointing straight back. That will give you some boundaries to have some power to lift the tail. Take another breath there. And then just slide forward to plank pose. And we'll slowly lower ourselves down onto our stomach. Stretch your legs back behind you. Take your arms, palms face up by your sides, shoulders lift. Big inhale, lengthening out through the back of your legs, lifting the head and chest. And then exhale, come down. And we're going to do that three more times, just lifting and lengthening the spine, reaching out through the legs, and then exhale back down. Inhale, so it's just a little extension through that spine, and then exhale. And one more time, make sure you use your low stomach to help your low back stay happy, and then exhale, lower, and we'll come back to hands and knees for cat and cow. But see, that first part, that lifting of the spine just now is the first part of cat and cow, right? So we sink the chest, inhale, look up. Now support with your low stomach right there, and then exhale. And here it's easy to support with a low stomach because you can ho hollow, right? But then as you inhale, don't let your stomach just hang down. Use a little bit of tone there and exhale. So while we're attuning to the breath with cat and cow and the movement of the spine, we also want to make sure we're not, again, pinching off the flow. The most common places to do that are right where the sacrum and the low back spine meet. And 
right at the base of the rib cage and right at the base of the skull. So as you move through your cat and cows, you find those three spots so you can get some movement and flow where the pelvis meets the spine, at the base of the ribs, at the base of the skull. So as I look up, I'm keeping that flow through the base of the skull. One more round of breath. Inhale, look up. And exhale to round. And then we'll come back to neutral. And taking your left foot behind you, take your right arm up, left leg up. Again, using your stomach to support the low back. Big inhale. And then exhale, elbow, knee, nose, all come in together. Inhale, stretch long. And exhale, hug it in. Inhale to reach. Exhale to hug in, working on that balance on the left hand, the right knee. And last time, exhale, hug it in. Place the hand and knee down. Take your left arm up, right leg back. Lifting through that low stomach, lift the back leg. Big inhale. Exhale, hug it in. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, hug it in. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale, reach long. Exhale, hug it in. And place that hand and knee down. Okay, sitting back on your toes. So tuck your toes under, heels toward each other. The toes could be a little bit wider. Sit back in toe breaker. I keep working on those toes. My feet had quite a weekend of pavement in it. Whew, it really, now like four days out, you can feel the healing starts to happen and that the muscles get really tight. Okay, interlace your hands in front of you, turn your palms out. So anyone who walks or runs on pavement, you gotta stretch your feet. Take your arms up to the sky, so my palms are facing up. Shoulder blades integrate back down onto the back, and the front ribs can soften. All right, so I'm actually sitting into my back body a little bit, almost like I'm sitting back and rounding back. Then, See if I can just lift the top of the chest. This is a tough thing to do because we often want to take the whole thing forward, right? But what if I round into my back body and then just open the top of the chest? It's a little softer and actually allows that energy to keep moving up the whole spine. I'm not cutting it off. Soften those front ribs again. Big inhale and then release. And we'll lean forward. Point your toes straight back. Again, heels toward each other. The tops of my feet actually get tighter, I would say, than anything um, running and walking on pavement. Like such that this morning, this is pretty tough for me to sit comfortably back. So, um, but please <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> sit all the way back there, right? If it's too hard, I can just come up here. But I'm just gonna stretch back out the tops of my feet and ankles and shins. Um, that's a common source of shin splints, of course, having that too tight. And then also, ironically, Having the front of the shins too tight um, will also mess up the balance of the calf muscles and it can lead to plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendonitis. All right, and then we're gonna lean forward, place the hands downward facing down, you shake out your feet and lean back into your down dog. So remembering to keep those front ribs knitting gently towards the pelvis, so not falling toward the floor so much. Let's take the left leg up to the sky. Big stretch. You could keep your right knee bent here, right? You could. And just lean it back through the pelvis. Big opening. Don't worry too much about squaring off the hips or not. Just, just open up and then place that left foot down. We'll take the right leg up. Really using this as a calf stretch for the opposite leg, the one that's on the floor. Just leaning it back. So we stretch the top of the feet. We stretch the base of the toes. Now we Open up the calves, place that foot down. And now we're gonna walk the feet forward to the hands, standing forward then. Go ahead and hold on to your forearms. Let your head hang. And the knees can be bent as much as they need to to have some movement in the pelvis, right? If I lock my knees and I kind of lean back like this, there's, it's like a dead space there. There's no breath, there's no movement. So I bend my knees, I shift my weight a little forward into my toes. Now I can access my low abdominal muscles. I have some freedom. I can wiggle my tail. That's kind of how you test things out. Recross your forearms. Keep letting that space 
grow between your skull and your cervical vertebrae, right? So more space there. Again, I kind of wiggle my head and just feel. Okay, yep, atlas, axis, they're all moving. <laughs> it's a little check-in. Bend your knees, bring your elbows to your knees, look up. So we'll just let the head be level with the heart for a moment there. Push into your feet. Keep your knees as wide as your feet. So create that nice firm base and then come up to stand. Okay. Take your feet hip distance apart and inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, hands to your sides. Inhale. Trying to breathe through your nose if you can. And exhale. Inhale, so trying to match the breath to the movement. I get to the top, I finish, and then I get to the bottom, and I finish with the exhale. So really trying to sync up. You might have to go a slightly different pace, right, depending on the volume of your breath, the, your sort of natural pace of movement. Again, this is the lovely thing about practicing at home, is you really can kind of do your own thing, and make it work for you. Exhale, and this time we're gonna bow forward, so go inhale. Exhale to bow, keeping the knees wide again. Inhale, look straight up, halfway up, sorry. Exhale, bow. And inhale, all the way up. So all I mean is don't let the knees come in toward each other. Exhale, hands to your sides. Inhale, standing tall. Exhale to bow. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale to bow. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to your sides. Inhale. Last one. Exhale to bow. Last one like this. Inhale, extend your spine. Look up. Exhale, round. And inhale, come all the way up. We're going to add a lunge on this next one. Exhale, hands to your sides first. Then inhale. Exhale to bow. Inhale, look halfway up. Exhale, step your left foot back. So we're in a long lunge, fingertips on either side of your right toes. Lift your left hip, scoop your right hip. I'm squaring off my hips that way. Front leg is at a right angle. Find that space, again, base of the skull, right at the base of the ribs, and then again, right at the low back. Let's see if we can breathe into all three of those planes. Nice and open, nice, clear, cord of energy flowing through those three spaces. Back knee down, and then inhale, sweep your arms up, lift up, look up, soften the shoulders back onto the spine. You might need to bend your elbows to do that. And then inhale again and lift just through the top of the chest. Exhale, we're gonna go palms together, elbow over knee. So being conscientious that when you do this, you have a lot of leverage and you don't need to use all of it. <laughs> Reserve your strength. So you can push your knee into your elbow a little bit, elbow into knee, and then try to square your chest off to your palms. Collarbones broad, extend out through the crown of your head. Nice big inhale. Exhale, touch down. And we'll step back, sweeping that right leg up to the sky. Bend the knee, open the hips. Sweep it open. Nice big twist. That whole right side can open up, up to the armpit, out to the fingertips. Then square off your hips and place that right foot down. And we'll slide forward to plank pose. Lower yourself down, point through your feet. Keep your hands by your sides, sh shoulders lift by your, keep your hands by your chest. Curl your head and chest up for a low cobra, using your low abdominal muscles. Hug the legs gently to the midline and then come all the way down. I said gently because we need space for the tailbone. Tuck your tail, tuck your toes, and lift up and back, downward facing dog. Head below the heart. Find that length, tail to crown of head, unimpeded breath. And then as you exhale, you look forward, step your feet forward, you can hop if you like, bow. And we're going to inhale, come all the way up on one breath. Stretch up, look up. Exhale, hands to your sides. Second side, inhale. Exhale to bow. Inhale, halfway up. Step your right foot back, long lunge. Fingertips on either side of that front foot. I stay up on my fingertips so I have more space. Right? If I'm down here, I'm a little more rounded. 
here I can kind of open up the top of the chest. So that's your choice. You could also use a block, of course. And I also like building the strength of my hands like that. I'll make little tents with my fingertips. It starts to build the arch of my hand little by little without thinking too much about it. Right hip is lifted, left hip trying to ground into the back of the leg. And then we'll place the back knee down. Lean your hips back slightly. Inhale, sweep your arms up. So you get that big stretch, kind of get that out of your system, but then soften the top of the shoulders, right? And then on your next inhale, lift through the top of the chest. And on your exhale, soften the front ribs. And then one more time, inhale. Exhale, hands together to twist. Elbow over knee. Keeping that knee stacked vertical. So you're not pushing the kneecap in. And go gentle with your leverage. So don't crank so far that you lose sensitivity. Move slowly into it. Move around that center line. So you're building your awareness. Tailbone to crown of head. And that line even extends out past your physical body, right? There's sort of an energetic extension that helps you orient in space. Take another breath. I'm trying to turn my ribs very slowly, very carefully to match my hands. And then we'll touch down, step back, downward facing dog, taking that left leg up, bend the left knee, open the hips. Big twist open, like you're trying to tap that foot in the air, trying to tap it back behind you. Big twist. Be a good calf stretch as well. Then square off your hips and place that left foot down. Slide forward to plank pose. Lower yourself down, elbows by your sides. Point your toes straight back. Walk your hands back a little bit, lift your shoulders. Take your hands slightly wider, like right to the edge of the mat, and just turn them out a little bit. So that just positions your, the head of your arm bones a little more optimally for opening the upper back and the chest. So we are stretching the legs back. We've got the shoulders lifted. We're in this sort of grasshopper pose of trying to lift the shoulders to the same height or even higher than the elbows. So that in itself is a good upper back shoulder collarbone opener, just breathing there, right? Now, if you want to add the whole back body strength to it, you got to push your pelvis down, okay, pubic bone pelvis down, lift your low stomach, and now start to lengthen up and curl into an upward dog type thing. It's really still a cobra because the legs are down, but we'll call it a half cobra, half upward dog. And then lengthen back down. Okay, tuck your toes, lifting up and back, downward facing dog. We're always trying to figure out how to get more space in the vertebrae as we go into that back extension, into those back bends. Let's look forward to the hands, walk the feet forward, bow, Inhale, come all the way up, stretch up, look up. Exhale, hands to your sides. Okay, let's take the feet together and sit low for Utkatasana, warming the big leg muscles up a bit more. See how low you can sit. See if you could get, just contemplate the thigh bones parallel to the earth, maybe. And then arms are in line with the ears. This is a hard pose for most people. This is pretty challenging. So embrace that, hug the midline, shoulder blades down, tuck your front ribs in, watch your thoughts when something is difficult. Just notice what you tend to say inside and then come up to stand, hands to your sides. So all the little patterns, the ways we treat adversity. We're going to do that one more time. And right now we're not looking to change it so much as just notice what is your pattern when you don't like something. Sit back, assuming most people don't love this. I used to really struggle with this pose, and I don't know why, but my legs um, are just incredibly strong, and it, this does not bother me at all anymore, but man, I remember really saying some interesting internal messages. Um, <laughs> so sitting nice and low, scoop those abdominals, and come all the way up. <laughs> all right. And see, this is the thing is like, there's no, I'm not, I'm not like a better person now that I can sit low in Ukatasana. This has not added any virtue to my life. It just is. <laughs> so it's important to remember that when you're sending yourself all these various messages of, of um, when we're doing yoga, 
Don't attach virtue to it. Okay. I know that's the opposite of the way a lot of yoga is taught, but take your arms straight out. Relax the top of the shoulders. Okay. So your, your feet are pretty close, if not touching, still from Ukatasana. Just stretch straight out. Now turn your palms face up. Bring your hands a little to the front plane. Okay, so they're a little, they're in my peripheral vision there. Keep stretching through the collarbones. Keep relaxing the top of the shoulders. Not even relaxing, but actively drawing the top of the shoulders down. Now it's tempting to send your rib cage forward. Don't, soften the ribs back, okay? So I'm not going into an upper back bend at all. I'm drawing the ribs, I'm trying to stack them there. Stay there, stay there. So this is warrior two arms right? Just right here. Like you're, so see, get a little resilient, holding something nice and easy, top one shoulder down, the other shoulder down, right? Can you really stay there and find that energetic reach without adding the legs yet? Okay. And then palms down and relax. Okay. So just remember that that wasn't so bad with the arms. We're going to try to keep that symmetry and power as we go into warrior two. So from the top of the mat, feet can be hip distance now. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale to bow. Inhale, halfway up. Step your left foot back. We'll start with a crescent lunge. So back heels lifted, arms sweep up. Draw those abdominal muscles back to support the low back. Push into your front heel, right? Ground that front thigh. Inhale, big stretch up. Now, pivot your back heel down. We're gonna go right forearm to knee first, side angle pose, so right in it, right like that. Draw your front ribs back. Keep that front leg more or less at a right angle. Turn the rib cage up a little bit. Now, stay with me, keep your front knee bent. Take your arms into warrior two. You may need to back the back leg up a little tiny bit to widen the stance. Turn your palms face up, stay in this pose. So I'm not as deep as I could be, that is okay. I'm just pushing into my heels. I'm gonna work maybe a little bit deeper, widening that back heel, trying to ground through the bent leg, hip. Top shoulders down and just hold it. Streaming that energy across the chest, out the collarbones, out through your fingertips. One more breath, nice and strong holding, resilient, we're not gripping, we have movement, we have breath, and then windmill your hands back down, and we'll step all the way back, downward facing dog. And feel the clearing on that right side. So that's the beauty of effort, right? Is it shifts things. Proper effort <laughs> will clear, it will make room. I don't know what, things to grow, things to happen. Okay, from here, we're actually just gonna walk our feet forward to our hands and bow. Inhale, come all the way up, <clears throat> stretch up, look up. Exhale, hands to your sides. Okay, second side, big inhale. Exhale, bow and touch down. Inhale, look halfway up, step your right foot back, crescent lunge to start. So you sweep the arms up to the sky, working on deepening that front knee bend. And as you do, you'll have to kind of sneak your back foot further back, right? The deeper you're able to get into this front leg, the wider your stance will need to be because your knee doesn't want to go over your toes, right? So we're backing up there so the shin is vertical. Big inhale, stretch it open. And then pivoting your back heel down, we're going left forearm to thigh, right arm over the ear. I have to widen my stance a little bit. I pivoted my back heel down so my back toes are a slight angle. They're not, they're not pointing right to the edge of my mat. They're pointing slightly forward. Turn your rib cage up, push into that back leg. Now stay strong here with that front leg as best you can. Come up to warrior two. I'm gonna maybe have to turn my back toes out a little bit. Um, so now my foot is parallel with the back edge of my mat. It just depends a bit on your knee situation. Shoulder blades down, turn your palms face up. Now don't get picky about your form, your external form. Get more interested in the, the movement inside, like the breath, the energy, you know, is there some flow in the effort? Don't just clamp down and grip. If you're feeling grippy and like in total survival mode, back up, right? Back up front, it's okay. 
right? You're only digging in and creating effort to where it can actually change things, not where it locks things down. That's the yoga balance. One more breath. And then windmill your hands down and we'll step back, downward facing dog and feel the shift on the left side. Opened up, you made a little space. And then we're gonna come forward to plank pose this time and lower ourselves all the way down. Point your toes straight back behind you. Let's interlace the hands behind us. The, your normal pinky on the outside, we'll do it twice. So whatever you just did by habit, we'll keep that, lift your shoulders, lift your chest. You don't have to lift your hands off your hips. Just notice if that tightens things up. Sometimes that creates, that cuts off the flow at the base of the neck. So just check that out. Or maybe for you, it's at the, the base of the spine. So maybe the hands have to rest and then come back down. Turn your face to one side and relax your hands if you want to your sides. And then we'll take the other pinky on the outside, the one you would not habitually do. Curl your head and chest up. Now lengthen through that low spine. So you gotta use your muscles to create space and that space allows for flow. So it's a perfect example of how effort actually creates space. Right, so I'm efforting, I'm hugging in the little butt muscle, outer hips, abdominals, big inhale, and then exhale, come down, turn your head the other way, relax your shoulders. And we're gonna sit all the way back to extended child's pose again. Little intermission between effort of the legs to stretch the side bodies open. So we're sitting back, heels, uh, toes touching, knees apart. So my chest could sit in between my thighs there. My rib cage could fit in there. That's about how wide the knees are. Because then when I crescent over to the right, I'm going to get a little more stretch that way. So I'm going to take my chest and lift it right up over rib cage on top of right knee using that right hand. Stretching open the side body, making space for breath and movement front to back. And this is the big thing I always notice after I do um, like a really big effort, like running, you know, 50 miles on Sunday, is that um, I need to create space in the side body. That's what gets clamped down. I think I was talking about this on Tuesday a little bit. I feel like a clamshell that's like clamped shut and that I need to get breath and movement by opening the sides of the body up. So you can feel that all the way up the sides of the rib. You're like a little clam starting to loosen up a bit, <laughs> letting the shells start to open up front to back. And we'll come back to center and over to the left. So you're gonna take that chest right up over your left thigh, your low stomach, wherever it is, and then stretching through the right arm, try to send your hips back to the right. So it's not a high effort stretch, but it's a really, um, I think it has good benefit to all the other poses, being able to get that breath to move that clamshell be able to take in water, in our case, air. Let the circulation begin. Another full breath here. And then back to center. And then we're going to do the next stretch here. So coming to sit any old way on your toes. And leaning over to your left side, left elbow easy, top arm comes across. We're just starting here now, kind of bend, um, purposely push your rib cage over to the right. So your hips are sliding back to the right, you got weight on that right hip. I'm rounding that side body. So not unlike the side angle, but maybe a little, a little more roundy. Okay, keep that, take that top arm across. And now if I just do that, it's a little tense. So I got to take the shoulder, I actually shrug the shoulder back and set the shoulder blade back in place. I'm reaching my fingertips to the side of the mat and let your head go. This is a funny one. It takes people time to figure out where the stretch is supposed to be, you know, where your head is supposed to be in space, where your shoulders. So figure it out for yourself. What you're going for is to feel an energetic line from the right hip up the side, up the side of the neck and out through the crown of the head. So adjusting the rib cage, front to back, side to side, twisting head and so on to find that energetic 
extension. Take a nice full breath there, reaching through those fingertips. And then we'll use the left hand, come back up to center. Okay. So we're opening up that whole side vagus nerve through the neck, etc. Okay, come on to your right fingertips. We'll slide the top arm across and relaxing your shoulder. And then again, purposely pushing yourself back to the left for the moment. So we're tipping the hips onto the left heel, opening up the left side of the ribs, a little rounded in that shoulder. I'm not overextending, I'm just letting it follow. And then slide the top arm down. But I gotta shrug the shoulder back. I think most people have to do that to get the shoulder to sit back. And then find where your head and ribs should be in relationship with each other, right? And sometimes that takes movement. The trick with movement is it has to be slow and investigative, right? If we just kind of jerk around, we're gonna miss the sweet spot, mostly. Maybe by luck you'll land on it. So going slow, paying attention, where is that? You know, I almost sometimes I feel like a frond of kelp waving in the ocean, just trying to find that current, a literal ocean current, different parts of my kelp body. <laughs> and then use your right hand, come back up to center. Okay, so that was our little intermission of leg standing poses. We're going to do a few more standing poses. So we'll come back to downward facing dogs, spread your fingers, lift up and back. And bending the knees, lean back through the hips, through the crease of the pelvis, uh, to, the, to the front of the, I should say, through the front of the thighs. They're moving straight back. And then we'll walk the feet forward to the hands, standing forward, bend. You can take a deeper standing forward bend if you like, see if you can touch with your palms, but not at the expense, again, of the, the, the sort of the clamshell walk down, right? So we've got to be careful. Like, can we still breathe and move in the pelvis? I might need to bend my knees a little bit. And then everybody do bend your knees, bring your elbows to your knees, sit back, scoop your low abdominals and come up to stand. Okay, that's a way of keeping space in the low back vertebrae as we round up standing. Okay, next little standing series, um, side angle into uh, Ardha Chandrasana half moon pose. And we're going to go for, for fun, trying to grab the back foot or ankle while we're back there in half moon pose. So just for fun, just to keep us on our, to our toes and work our balance. So first familiar sequence, inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, look halfway up. We'll start with that crescent lunge. Step your left foot back. Inhale, sweep your arms up. And then pivot the back heel. Bring your right forearm to your knee. And there you are in side angle. Okay. Holding that, reach that back leg. Open up the front of your hip a little bit. Now bring your hand to your hip. Look out past your right toes. Slide out into half moon. So this is great for balance, right? I could even just barely hold right here with my toes down, keep those right toes pointing straight forward. Once I get up there, I'm gonna work on bending that top knee. And now it does, it is easier to hold on to your ankle. If you bring the knee toward your chest, it will bring your ankle closer or the top of your foot closer. And then you can start to open up the whole thing. Okay, so it's a good balancing pose. It's a good thigh stretch. It's a good little twister to keep your attention. Then let go, touch back down, come all the way up with your arms, come all the way up, turn your feet parallel, hands to your sides. I'm gonna turn around to face you and we're gonna bow forward and wide-legged forward bend. So feet are parallel, touch down, let your head hang. I think I lost you guys. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. Okay. Bowing forward. Inhale, halfway up. Hands to your hips. Come all the way up. We're just going to step to the front of the mat from there. Okay, second side. Inhale, sweep your arms up. 
Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway up. Step your right foot back. Inhale, crescent lunge. And then pivoting that back heel, we're going to come right into side angle pose. Extending through that back leg. Opening up the front of the pelvis here. And then hand to hip. Look out past your left toes. Touch down. I need to make a little space for myself here. And then lift up. So that left foot is not going to move. So we could be working on it from here with the right toes down, just working on keeping that left knee wide, supporting with those left fingertips. It's a nice spot to use a block as well. Now, in order to bend and hold on to the ankle, I'm taking the knee toward my chest to get my ankle. Then I'm moving it back. Okay, I could also have, I could also hold on to the, to the toes. This depends on what's accessible for you. And that is... Little baby Ardha Chandra Chapasana, half moon sugar cane pose. Nice thigh stretch. And then we'll let go of that. Touch down. Come up to stand all the way up. Feet parallel. Bowing forward. So make sure your heels are turned wide enough that the inside edges of your feet are parallel. You can make the earth closer by taking your feet wider. Push down evenly into both feet from the core of the pelvis, but don't forget to lift up also from the low abdominals. Inhale, halfway up. Hands to your hips. Come all the way up. Good. And... Step to the front of the mat. Okay. Okay, big inhale. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway up. And we're going to come into a squat, lowering. So you could have your feet a little bit wider. Heels trying to come down, slowly, slowly coming to sit back. We're going to come into a shoulder stretch to start. Um, I should say shoulder stretch twist, really. So bend your right knee, cross it over your left, and then holding on with your hand, your left hand, take your right arm straight back behind you. Now, just like we were doing standing, turn your palm face up, lift up through the crown of your head. Big shoulder stretch. Now, it may not actually feel like a shoulder stretch for you, but this external rotation and activation of those rotator cuff muscles is good for everybody, even if you're very flexible. In fact, maybe more important, you're not getting a stretch, but you're getting integration. So drawing that shoulder blade on, draw your rib cage back. Use your left hand to help you turn more. Big inhale. And then exhale, come back to center. And we'll do the second side. So I'm bending my left knee, cross it over. Hold on with my right hand, just my hand, not my elbow. Take your left arm back, okay? But then turn your ribs before you get too far with that hand. Turn your ribs to meet the hand. Turn the palm face up. Lift up through the crown of your head. Big opening from right collarbone across the left, almost like I was shooting a bow and arrow, right? So I'm drawing that right elbow back. In this case, I'm holding on to my knee. And I'm extending out through that left palm, palm face up. Big inhale, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale back to center. Now, come on to your stomach. And we're going to take the right arm straight out. Left hand is just by my side here, not doing much at all. Right palm face down. Start to turn away from that hand. So I I'm, I'm, can keep my legs stacked. I could have my left arm behind me. But I'm twisting that shoulder a little bit more. This is more passive than the stretch we just did, so I have to be a little more careful. My head is floating. I could have it down on the mat or I could have it on top of a block. Your choice. I'm just stretching that arm open and then back to center. Left palm face down, right hand to spite of my chest. Rolling, rolling. Just a nice gentle 
roll through there. So again, you have a lot of weight, a lot of leverage behind you. You don't want to crank into it. It should feel good on that shoulder. Nothing terrible. I could bend the knee and kind of support myself there. Head is up for the moment. This isn't a super relaxing stretch, but it's opening up the front of the shoulder. Okay, I'm back to center. Now, one elbow bent across, forehead down, one elbow palm face up. So you know this, this pose we sometimes do in yoga where we try to connect the hands. We're not going to quite do that, but we're going to come close. So I'm going to push the pelvis down. My toes are still down, but I'm pushing the pelvis down, supporting my low back with my stomach, and I'm just lifting the hands up and then gliding them toward each other and then back down. Lift up and trying to glide them toward each other and back down. Just a few more times. We're just activating those back muscles, supporting with the core. So I don't really care if my fingers touch or not. I'm just working that left shoulder blade one more time and back down. And then switching hands. Left palm face down in front, right palm face up behind you. I have to keep that shoulder a little bit lifted or I'm not trying to drop the elbow or anything. I'm keeping my chest squared off and then lifting the hands up. So that might be all you really do, right? And then back down, lift them up and then try to bring them toward each other and then back to home base. Lift and try to bring them toward each other and then back to home base. Keep lifting that right shoulder as you lift and back down. And one more time, lift up, trying to touch and back down. And then bring both hands underneath the, the shoulders. Rest your elbows for a moment. Let your upper back just round briefly. Okay. And then we're going to come on to hands and knees and do a twist here. The one we often do in the very beginning. Sometimes it's nice to do once you're warmed up. You actually get a little more mobility. Left palm face up. Come all the way through. Okay, so we have options here. You can come up on your right fingertips. That's a normal twist we often do in the beginning of class. Or you can sit back toward your heels, take that top arm, and wrap it around and see if you could grab your bottom inner thigh. So that we're really wrapping the shoulder up here. Nice full breath. I could even take this hand and wrap and grab something down there, an ankle or something. Get all bound up. <laughs> Just take one more breath. And then undo, come back to center. And... We'll take, come starting on all fours, this is sort of our home base, this is a good home base stretch. Everybody who does class with me is familiar with this one. Right palm face up, come on to your right shoulder so you can stay right there. I like that because it opens up the back of the ribs, but for a lot of people this doesn't do a whole lot for the shoulders. So then we could add on and just take that left arm across, I could hold on to the back, the, the right thigh. I could slide my hips back, get it more bunched up like that. And I could bend my right hand and try to grab onto something. I'm just going to keep my right arm straight today. Nice full breath. Opening up that shoulder, back body twist. I like having the forearm go across my kidneys there. I can breathe into my kidneys. And then back to center. Unwind yourself. Coming back to hands and knees. A little shoulder flossing, straight elbows. So that's just like the full range of motion for the rotator cuff. That's all we've done in those last few exercises. Then sink the upper back, lift the upper back, sink and lift, keeping the elbows nice and straight and strong. We're just flossing the upper back, back and forth. Head is just following. Nothing else is moving, just the upper back. One more time and back up. Okay, good. Come on to your back. All the way back. Draw your knees into your chest. We're going to do a little work with the shoulder blades here, bending the elbows, tuck one shoulder blade in and then the other. So before we do our sort of finishing twist, we're doing a little exercise here for the upper back and the shoulder rotator cuff. So your back of your hands may not touch the floor. That's okay. But notice how bent my elbows are. So I'm not way up here. I'm actually pretty, my elbows are almost level with my waistline and I've really got my shoulders on my upper back. Knees are hugging in toward each other. And I just go a little to the right and back to center and a little to the left, about 45 degrees, and back to center. I'm gonna keep my knees together the whole time, no space between them, they're not shearing one in front of the other. So that means my hips are staying squared off. I'm just going left to right. Now as you get that figured out, just that really basic motion there, keep the shoulder blades down. So as I go to the left, the right shoulder blade is gonna press down. As I go to the right, 
the left shoulder blade's pressing down. It may help you to take your hands off the floor a little bit. Right? It might give you better access to the shoulder blades themselves. And really pushing the upper back down, the shoulder blade down, just back and forth. If you want to make it more challenging, you can straighten your legs a little bit and hold it and back up. And then go over and hold it and back up. And one more time to the right, hold, back up. And to the left, hold that right shoulder blade and back up. And now go all the way to the right. Let your left shoulder blade, if it wants to come off, it can come off. Use your right hand to hold your knees. Nice, easy breath. Letting the rib cage twist, relax the base of the skull. Go back to that midline from tailbone up through the pelvis, up through the mid-back, the back of the heart, the base of the skull, the crown of the head. Breathe around that midline. And coming back to center, over to your left. Right shoulder blade down. Left hand could be on your hips. My right shoulder blade may not stay down. That's okay. I'm going to let it. If it wants to lift off a little bit, I'll let it. I can play around with where I want to bend that elbow, stretching different parts of those pectoral muscles, part of the rotator cuff muscle group. Nice big breath. Finding that central channel and breathing around it, expanding around it. And then back to center. Hug your knees into your chest. We're just going to place the feet. Hands on the low belly to start. Go ahead and close your eyes here. It's not quite Shavasana, but, but close. So close your eyes. Rest your hands on your low belly. Draw the shoulder blades back gently. Let your upper back round into the earth. Close your eyes. Soften your face, your brain. So you're still breathing purposely through your nose, in and out, back of the throat, feeling the belly rise under your hands and then sink. So it's like not Shavasana and it's not quite an active pose, right? It's just paying attention purposely lifting the belly on the inhale and exhale, purposely sinking it back on the exhale. That is not a normal breath, right? That's a, a yoga thing, <laughs> just to point that out. That's not how you should walk around breathing during the day. But here, it's a good way to stimulate a relaxation response. The vagus nerve wanders down to where your hands are, nourishing those lower abdominal organs and muscles. And so we're just stimulating the vagus nerve, which is the parasympathetic nervous system, the part of the nervous system that lowers the heart rate and the breath rate, and lowers your blood pressure and stimulates digestion, stimulates all of the nourishing aspects of your nervous system versus the fight or flight aspects, which are really useful for keeping you alive day to day. But it's also nice to have some access to the calming side of the nervous system. Let's take a few more breaths, feeling the rise and fall of your low stomach under your hands. And then slowly stretching your legs out long, if you like, or you can keep them bent, right? If that's a nice neutral pelvis position for you. Take your palms face up by your sides. You need to resettle the shoulder blades, you can. 
And then this is the tricky part for a lot of us is, can you really let the breath go here? So can you let go of that rise and fall of the belly? Can you let go of the purposeful inhale and exhale? So Shavasana, corpse pose, is about of your willingness to, to surrender. To let go of that process of death and reformation. Every time you find yourself regrouping, reforming, retensing either around the breath or around muscles in the neck, the shoulders, the hands, the feet, let it go again, let it dissolve. What if you become formless? Just for a few minutes, let the boundaries of your skin dissolve. Let the intention of your breath go completely. Your breath might become almost imperceptible. But since the edges of your mind are dissolving, you wouldn't be able to perceive your breath anyway.
And you're going to slowly return to your breath. Refilling the body. Bringing your attention back. Undissolving, reforming. Stretch your arms overhead. Take a big inhale. Exhale to soften. And then draw your knees to your chest. Just rock to your right side. That presence, that weightiness in your body as your hands come up to sit. Any comfortable position that allows you to just have a moment of groundedness, of gratitude, being centered, bring the palms together at the heart. Honor that midline, that life force that runs through us. So much gratitude. You well. <laughs> 